be doing a stainless socket weld. I'm just showing you some tips and tricks. We, you know, we got our chain vise taped up, so no cross contamination. You can see it's already contaminated though, but just for a visual, you can see what it looks like. We got our braid down here for ground. So we don't get any art marks or cross contamination. We're gonna do a school tour today too. And uh, you can see all the new renovations we've done for the school. So it's, when you come back to school, it's gonna be ready for you. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time of teaching and, and helping people. I just thank you for blessing us today. We had a huge blessing and you know, we want your will to be done and not ours. In your name we pray, amen. So first thing you wanna do, and this will get you if you're a new guy, you wanna, you wanna put the pipe all the way in the socket and I go ahead and put a line. And then I can see how far to pull out. You wanna back this off a little bit from seating down all the way, leave room for expansion. So you, you don't want it to sit on this because if you don't have a square cut here, if this isn't square cut and you weld it out, the heat is going to draw it in and then this is going to dog leg one way or another. So watch out for your fitter and then he'll blame it on you and say that you welded it wrong and didn't quarter it and he's got it shoved all the way in there. Imagine that. So what we're going to do is rock it back a little bit and then put a tack. So we're going to give it about a, I don't know, 332 gap in there and then we'll straighten it up. So I, I'm using some of these uh, tungsten tips. We just, we're just having fun. We just do whatever we want. I don't, you've never seen that before. A tungsten pre-sharpened tip, screws in and out. These are for the professionals. So I'll probably dip my tungsten because I said that. Hand me a, hand me a wire right there. 332. So we're going to attack it using 332. Oh. Where is that? Is it on high freak? Is it on? You got it. All right, you ready? You see the tip glowing right there? I don't see how they put threads in tungsten like that, but they do. How come you pull the pipe in again? All right, so now he's leveling it up. There's a level. All right, you ready? See, I knew I was going to do that. Huh? Why didn't we purge? I don't know. So, it's not an open butt. Uh, most of your sugar comes from when stainless gets so hot and liquidy to the point on the inside for it to be contaminated uh, because of the oxygen on the inside. <laughs> now, Trey's such a good welder, he's not going to get that pipe so hot on the inside that yeah. it oxidizes. 
Now they, do, now they know you're lying. I'll talk you up before Friday now. All right, watch out. Got to get this side. Before it draws and you blame it on me. It's just a universal 332 to a 18. Now, uh, you might have a spec that says they want a minimum of an 8 gap in between the lip and the bottom of the pipe. You have some that say they just, they just require at least a 16. And the way they go about checking these in the field or something like that, uh, they'll actually take and shoot it like if you do a regular butt weld. They're not actually checking the weld, they're just making sure the fitter put the gap in there. Fitter didn't put the gap in there. Well, Either that or they'll PT it, check for pinholes. A lot of people will leave a, a fish eye in their, in, in their stop, their termination on the very cap. So what I'm gonna do, since this is stainless on stainless, I'm gonna quarter it so it doesn't draw. And then, you know, another key about stainless is a lot of times you'll have a valve that has a socket built into it. And you need to read the tags on those valves because sometimes you gotta remove the Teflon seal because if you get it too hot and you melt that Teflon seal, those valves are like $3,000 a piece for a two inch. So, don't get, don't get caught doing that. So, and then you see a lot of people, if they're getting in a hurry, they'll just one pass it. If you get caught one passing it, they will make you cut it out. They at least want one in and one over, meaning a root in and then a cap. So you kind of at least put two passes on it most of the time. All right, you ready? It's basically just a fillet weld. Austin, yes, tell them again for those that just tuned in what all we're going to be giving away. Um, right after we get done with this weld, we'll be doing a shop tour. We'll be giving a black mambo away. Does anybody have any questions? Trey with the Black Mama, will they get their custom leather design on their handle? Yeah, you can get that. All you gotta do is ask. Of course, you gotta supply the PDF. You know, we're not gonna do the artwork for you. You gotta have somebody do the artwork. Or if you just want a name, let us just put whatever font we wanna use, that's fine. So tell them uh, I'm using a number eight cup. We're using a Miller machine right now. I got, I'm running about 125. One eight tungsten. Screw in tips.
It's starting kind of windy over here. Not bad. Not bad color. All right, so I'm going to crank it up and do another pass with a 1.8 wire, and then we'll get on to the tour. I turn it up to about 175. Now, since you got the root pass in this tray, will you continue to quarter weld it out? Probably not. Is if you can get around it fast enough, then you should be able to. Do it without drawing it too bad. Yeah, if you can get on some stainless sockets, man, that's some gravy work. Schedule pipe is 40. Y'all can just respond to that on the. And then use a stainless brush. If you're going to brush it at all, you can kind of look at that second pass, see how it looks. I don't know. We've had some young people in here, like 16. All right. So there we go. And I know, I know y'all thought I was dipping my tungsten, but I was really just scooping the dross off the top of the puddle, making it cleaner. I'm, you know, you gotta be good like that one day. All right. I guess we can go around and see the school now, and then we'll do the giveaways. We'll give away a Black Mamba. We're going to give away a set of these Scotsman two-hole pins. What did you do your cat heat on, Trey? 175. All right. Just so you know, Central Gulf Industrial Alliance, we're partnered with all these companies, got a gold level endorsement. This is the test facility we have. So whenever you're getting ready to test out, there'll be a CWI back here. You have to come in one of these booths. It might be a restricted box. It might be whatever it is. You'll have to come back here and test out. All right, come on. We probably need to move a little faster so we don't lose them. Four post jig. We got socket welds right here. We got the confined space, working from heights. One inch butt weld right here. Rigging demo over here. 
We keep our shop clean too. I don't know if you noticed, but we did, we repaint. We have cleaning duties for the students. You have to go in there and weld a piece of pipe. We'll have a little test jig in there you gotta do. Tube wall demo, stainless steel, schedule 10 purge weld back there. And this is what I was talking about today. We got a donation. Man, God is good. God is good. We got a donation. Look at all this TIG wire. That, four pallets of TIG wire. I, I don't, we're probably not going to have to buy a TIG wire in two years. We got the pipe rack simulator. <coughs> Branch layout. Roll out demo right here. So you can have a foot pedal roll out like it is in the shop. Olets. This is the Olets, you can see. Level one mirror welding. So instead of being in a booth, you get to do all this stuff when you come to Alabama Pipe Welders Academy. Box test. 